My name is Chris Schneider. Um, I'm here today to tie a fly for Pike and Muskie. Uh, this one is like an optic minnow variation, a uh, Brad Bowen's fly, and I'll just go ahead and get started on it. Just like with any fly you tie, you start out with a good thread wrap. Come back to about where the bobbin is at, uh, where the barb is at. Um, today I'm going to do a uh, black and pink. Um, just try to make sure that your bucktails, this is the basic, the whole basis of your uh, fly here. The, it's where you get all your body from and a lot of your movement as well. So when it, when it comes to tying in this hair, one thing to remember, some of this we're going to be spinning the hair. Um, the hair towards the top of your bucktail doesn't like to spin as much as the hair towards the bottom. The hair on the bottom is a lot more tapered, a lot thicker at the bottom, so it likes to spin a lot more. Um, as far as your clump size goes, I use about half of a pencil thickness. You can tie them a little bit thicker. If you go too thick, you won't get the movement because there's just too much material there to get caught up in itself. So, Next thing you want to do, any natural animal hair has body under fur. Um, there are a lot shorter hairs and you want to get rid of those with this because one, you just, you're not going to see them, they're too short, but they actually will cut your thread as you spin and everything else. So you just kind of grab towards the top and pull out these guard hairs. And then your very first piece is the little bit going back for your tail. Um, this just gets tied in regular style or however you want to call it, straightforward style. And you just kind of want to help work it around the hook so everything's somewhat covered. And as you can see, that didn't spin a whole lot like if you're fam familiar with tying with bucktail. Then you just really wrench that down and in. And that's a little bit of your tail. Um, the basic principle for this fly is hair feather flash. Um, so we'll just continue with that. Got one piece of bucktail in. I'm going to grab my feathers. Uh, I try to grab two that are somewhat similar in length. two very big webby feathers and as, and as you can see the vein inside is really small that's what makes them good and helps with your movement um, and you can put as many feathers in as you want and you can you and this is where you can build length off of a one hook fly you know you can tie it in like that and have your 12 inch fly you can tie it in here and make it a lot shorter the big webby feather does still give it bulk in the water so I always like to go down to where it kind of starts to uh, not get, uh, to where it's not stiff. And that just helps it move better. And just put it right in on, on the side. Um, there's no wrong way to tie these flies unless you use too much bucktail for the most part. But as it comes to the feather and the flash, you can use as much or as little as you want and whatever you're trying to you know more flash no one has a right answer on it I like to have a bunch of both of like every comb combination so I make my feathers roughly the same length just to keep them somewhat symmetrical So there's, we got our hair, we got our feather, and now we're going to get into our flash. For the tail part, I just use Flashaboo. Um, I use the, hol the holographic. It's a little bit more expensive, but it gives you that 
it gives a depth to it instead of just being a solid color piece of ribbon. Um, so you can, like I said, you, you can grab as much or as little as, as you want of all of this. For the most part, these flies are incredibly durable. The flash is truthfully the only thing that can really get thinned out by the teeth and everything. But, so you can always start out with more. Plus, if you put too much into it, you can always pull some out. Um, something I do, I don't even know how many strands I have right there, 15 to 20 or more. Um, instead of just keeping it straight and having this definite straight edge right here, I like to grab this clump in the middle and you just kind of pull a few hairs and you kind of get a tapered look to it. So that way as it's back here, it's not just a definite line sitting straight, straight down. And I'll pull those back to about where the feather, uh, the feather tips are. And if you just do a couple soft wraps, and then take your thumb and kind of get it to spread over the back of this fly, followed up by a couple more tight ones, and then just grab the front of your flash, pull it straight back, and then use your thumb again to kind of get it to spread over. And that helps lock lock it in too. If I mean, if, if you do get a fish that wants the tail strike you and stuff, they can't really pull those out. So there's our first set of hair feather and flash. Um, you can use as many different colors as you want. Um, two tone, all one color. Um, every piece a different color. Just whatever you want to do. Um, you'll see people tie a lot in earth tones and natural colors. And you'll see people throw bright pink, bright this. If they, they're very visual hunters. If they can't see it, you know, and that's where I think your bright pinks come in and your yellows and your chartreuse, because nothing in life is really that color. So now you just kind of repeat that process again. And again, that's just, this is all up to you, I mean, on how much feather and flash you want to put put into this fly. When you cut your bucktail off you always kind of want to get all the way down to the hide piece there because that's where your hair is the widest and going to spin a lot better for you. And keep the length that you want. The longer hair is what really gives this fly the movement as you're stripping it through the water. So again about two-thirds of the way up. Some, some of those are still long but they're the guard hair. They're the under hair and they're actually not round. They're more of a triangle and when you go to crease them they will cut your thread. Um, a thing to help make your thread a little bit stronger is always spin it a little bit first before you go to tie this in. It just kind of wraps it over on itself, uh, makes it stronger and then also makes it a smaller diameter. So from now all of our bucktail will be tied in what we call reverse so it's just turning it around the other way. You can do a couple of soft wraps and then if you're good at spinning, you can pull down and spin, and it kind of comes all the way around. A good bucktail will help with that, but there's nothing wrong with just making sure it's coated well and helping it along with your fingers. So you get a couple, get it spun, and then you just really want to lock that in. And this whole reverse tide process is really where the protection of this fly comes in, because now we're just going to flare it back. And this is how it, you protect your thread and everything from the teeth on these fish because we're going to cover up all of our thread right there with this bucktail. So you have it pushed back and you just kind of gently pull your thread forward and you come back in, in front. And is what you're going to want to do here is build up kind of like a cone. You're going to build a cone up with your thread and you just kind of come back and forth. And as you can see, it starts to lay the hair more back. Um, you can keep whatever taper you want. Um, don't put it back too far because the, the water itself will make it come back. Um, I just kind of 
tell myself like a 45 degree angle is how I preferably like like mine and uh, as you can see it's just it doesn't take much at all when you blow on it to move these hairs um, don't freak out because you can see through everything and see your stuff because as we keep doing this everything's overlapping and uh, it just it gets bigger and fills in very well so um, now I'm going to do the same thing again with the hair feather now I also can you can also use like good schloppen or saddle hackle um, they're about seven inches long if you get a good pack like this just depends on that length that you want and really how much money you want to spend on your materials because these flies can get very very expensive um, I'm going to throw in some more pink ones And again, you just want to bring them in on the side. Your, your feather is also what gives it a lot of movement at the back of the fly. You know, these, these flies have really big profiles to them. And uh, these super soft feathers just really move and everything else. So. And you just want to wrap them. I try to keep mine on, on the sides. You can also put them up towards the top so they come along the back to where you're kind of giving that black bard effect. Fish are typically always darker towards their, the tops of their backs and lighter on the bottom. So we got hair feather flash, hair feather, so more flash. Since I'm doing pink and black, my first set of flash was pink. This time I'm going to do black. Sometimes the staple in this stuff comes undone and then you end up pulling it all out anyway. Okay, so again I'm just going to grab it in the middle and give it a little bit of a taper there so it's not just all the exact same length. About to the point of where your last stuff is at and again just a couple soft wraps and it'll kind of spread around on there a little bit or it falls off because since since you built that cone there you're not tying on a perfectly flat surface you're tying on an angled sur surface so sometimes your thread falls back down you just rework it couple hard wraps to tie it in and then you can fold your front half over the back. The flashaboo, depending on what colors you have of it, um, some of the flies I tie are like a standard pike colors, red and white. This red, when you use red flashaboo, they can be looking at that as like scales falling off or more so like there's like they're bleeding, they're already injured which comes more into that opportunistic point of view of these fish. Um, so now we're just going to continue on with bucktail. Again, half a pencil. It's real easy to use too, too much hair on these. And it's just, it's super easy and I have a whole fly box full of flies that I'll probably never fish for that reason that, that you just don't get the movement out of them and then you ended up wasting wasting even that much more material so I'm still working with half of a pencil third of a pencil then you just want to overlap this hump that you have here 
that's about where I start it again. And I just do the two soft wraps. And keep those wraps right on top of, e of e each other, and then you can get it to spin. If it doesn't want to, like I said, you can just help it along. So if you get a tail like this black one here that really doesn't want to spin around, as long as it's lock locked in, just start pulling the, f the fibers back. And once you get it going, you can just push down the shank of the hook. Try to keep it evenly covered. If you do run into a point where you got a big gap here, when you push it back, you can kind of turn some of the fibers and help yourself out. Then I just kind of crease them because it helps you out. The other thing, when if you're using too much, when you come back to build that cone, it makes it really hard because then your cone just turns into this behemoth ball of thread. So when you do this, you just come forward and you just kind of wrap back and forth, you know, until you get this base going. And you can see like that already has kind of held it back, but and you can let, let, let go, see where it's at, decide you want more of a taper, more of it to lay back, and you just keep going back and forth. If you keep just right against the hair and keep wrapping, trying to think that's going to do it, is what happens is you build up this one linear wall of thread, and then it falls forward on you, and then you have thread everywhere, and it's just nerve-wracking. Nerve so you got to do this back and forth, back and forth weave. So if you wanted to, you can always add more, more feather. For my singles, which single just means one fly hook, uh, I typically do anywhere from four to six feathers, and de depending on the quality of them, will also depict on how many, how many I I use. So the other thing you can do from here to add more flash from here, you already have quite a bit of flash about back here, so I don't worry so much about long flash. This is where your crystal flash can come in handy. Um, just a different kind of flash. It's pretty much a crinkly little ribbon, a lot finer. And you can use this if you want to add more and more flash. Um, again, I just tied in black. You could do the pink, you could do the black, um, but I'll go ahead and put some of this in. And you don't have to use this. Again, this is just going back to the how much flash you want in your fly. So I grab, oh I don't know, there's probably 10, 15 strands in, in here. Kind of grab it in the middle. And I just hold it on top. Again, a couple, not, su not super soft, but enough to hold it. And then you can kind of move the crystal flash around to cover the top part. Then I really just wrap it a few more times to keep that stuff there. And then your other half you have to the front. I can pull roughly in half and just pull around and down. And that's to cover your bottom. A couple of soft wraps and then same thing, just kind of move it around with your fingers. So there's some more flash there. Go back to your other color or your single color. You just keep doing this process till you get to the front of the hook. As you can see, you end up with quite a mess tying these flies some of the different heads you can put on them. You spin a bunch of hair, shave it with a double-sided razor, they make a mess. So again, just continuing with the reverse tide.
the other thing when you're doing two different colors, try to get your hair, try to match up your bucktails with the same, the hairs are the same length. And that will help with your natural taper of this fly. Because if you use one that's really long and the other one that's really short, you just, you don't get the taper and you end up covering one up too, too much. So now, de depending on what head you're, you're going to do, depends on where you decide you're going to put that head on and how much shank you have left. I'm, I'm just going to use some clear cure goo and build up a epoxy-like head like so. So I'm going to keep, keep going with this because you can go pretty tight. If, if you wanted a real flashy fly, you could have done that crystal flash step between every chunk of bucktail. Just depends on what you're looking for. It really looks like you're going to have this big monstrosity, but uh, again, like right now, we're probably talking a profile about like so on the strip, and uh, which you, you, you want to be proportionate, you know, a lot of bait fish are long and skinny, but a short one's not this fat enough big ones not this skinny and that's where I really a lot of guys fly fishing for pike get into the like Barry Reynolds fly which is just a rabbit strip and then another one that you wrap and pretty much put put eyes on it great fly lots of movement but going back to that opportunistic you, you know you can make them eat something when they're not hungry because if you just make it too easy on them, they're going to come and eat it. So for this one, this will be 
my last chunk of bucktail. So now we're just going to build up a pretty good sized thread base. We'll glue some eyes on, show you how to use some CCG. So if you feel like you don't have enough room, um, you can keep coming back and as you can see it's laying it down more than really what I want. But as you come back and you get to that last spot, you can really cinch on it again and get that hair to spin back up and around. And get back to your nice big flared hair. And I just build up the head with thread as much as I can. Thread's cheaper than clear cure goo, so the bigger your head, the bigger the eyes you can put on. And less glue that you use. So now the fly's done and we're just going to finish up the head. This is using clear cure goo. I already mixed it. I like to put glitter in, in mine just to uh, give some more reflective characteristics. And I use a toothpick just to fill in this gap. And you can let it level out and hit it with your light. Just cover up your stuff on the table so you don't cure all that too. When you put the glitter in it, it takes it a little bit longer to cure, but not much. It gets to working pretty quick. Then I'm going to go on the underside. Try to turn that a little bit more. And it's okay to go into the hair fibers and everything. It just helps hold it in. what I like to do is just you know try to have a nice round little head you can use big eyes or small eyes um, however you want build it up as much as you want and this will help hold those eyes on that you just kind of lightly glued in and the one thing just you know you cover up your thread that you finished off with. There's your fly.